Hello everyone. Today we are going to be starting to graph trigonometric functions. Now in order to graph trigonometric functions, you really do have to know the unit circle. So let's go back to the, the unit circle and look at it in degrees and then let's look at it in radians. One of the things we also have to do when we're graphing is use everything in terms of radians, which is very different than what we've been doing the last week and a half. So let's start. This is now going to be um, my lesson eight. And we're going to be starting with basic sine and cosine graphs. Again, everything goes back to the unit circle. So right now, these are your class notes. Um, you really should be writing this on loose leaf paper or something, someplace where you're going to keep it and be able to refer back to it. Now, if we go back to the unit circle, and this is my zero degrees, which is the point, again, one zero, and this is my 90 degrees, and this is the point zero one. And then I rotate down to 180 degrees. This is the point negative one zero. And then I keep going to 270. So this is the ordered pair zero negative one. And then I'm back to 360 degrees. Now these are my quadrantal angles in terms of degrees. Now we have to talk about them in terms of, of radians. The most important definition here is 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So this 180 degrees, and I'll use a brighter color to highlight, this 180 degrees is equal to pi. And 180 times 2 is 360, so 360 is 2 pi. 0 is going to be 0. Now think about 180 degrees in pi. 90 is half of 180, so 90 degrees in radians is pi over 2. So if I have 0, 1 half pi, 1 whole pi, this would be 1 and a half pi. 1 and a half pi is 3 pi over 2 radians for 270, and then I'm back to 2. So basically you were counting maybe by halves, right? You have zero, one half with the pi, one whole with the pi, three halves with the pi, four halves reduces to two pi. And that would be on the unit circle. So if we were to make the chart for the measurements on the unit circle, this is what we would get. So if we had sine of theta, and we have cosine theta, and we should also even mention tangent of theta. And my first would be zero degrees. Then I would have my pi halves for 90 degrees. Then I would have pi for 180. Three pi over two for 270, and then two pi brings me back to the zero. 360 full rotation. So this is now rotating all the way around the unit circle. So if I look at the sign again going around the unit circle, the sign is equal to the y coordinate. That's never going to change. So if this is my y coordinate, Sine of zero degrees is still zero in terms of radians. Oops, I gotta get rid of that. It's radians now. Sine of zero radians is still zero. But the sine of pi over two radians is still one. The sine of pi radians is zero. The sine of three pi over two radians is negative one and then the sine of two pi is zero again. So you've got this nice little zero up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, up to zero. Cosine 
is always your x coordinate. And so cosine at zero degrees is one, cosine at pi over two radians is zero, cosine at pi radians is negative one, cosine of three pi over two radians is zero, and then back to two pi, which is one. Tangent is always sine divided by cosine. That's not going to change for us ever. Zero divided by one is zero. One divided by zero, undefined. Zero divided by negative one is zero. Negative one divided by zero, undefined. And then we're back to zero. So tangents, very different. But let's now see how the unit circle and the angles, what they equal for sine and cosine look like on a graph. Now when you make a graph, we're just gonna make a graph from zero to two pi. We're gonna follow the table. And so here's my y-axis. And here's my x-axis. And if I'm only going, if I'm alternating up and down from one, we're gonna go into what that means when we're going up and down, it's actually called oscillating between one and negative one. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. And here's zero, here's 90 pi over two, here's 180 pi, here's 270, three pi over two, and here's two pi, full rotation. So this is taking this full circle, cutting it with the scissor, opening it up. What does it look like? Well, let's see. Let's do sine first. Sine of zero is, I'm actually gonna use different colors, so this way we'll see it a little bit better. The sine of zero is zero. The sine of 90 or pi over two is one. The sine of 180 or pi is zero. The sine of 270 or three pi over two is negative one. And then two pi brings us back to zero. So here's the sine graph. It is like a sideways S. Flipped backwards and up and sideways. So here is my sine function. Y is equal to sine of x. This is just my basic sine function. Now, if I want to take a look at my cosine function, cosine starts at 1. And then cosine hits 0 with pi over 2 radians. Cosine's at negative 1 for pi. It's at 0 for 3 pi over 2. And it's back up at 1. Cosine, you gotta draw a little lip, because remember, these are curves. They can't be straight. Everything's gotta be curved. So this is y equals cosine of x. And they follow the coordinates. So what I say with cosine, cosine starts high, ends high, halfway in between is down low. Sine starts at zero, ends at zero, halfway in between it's at zero. It follows the coordinates of the unit circle. And it's very logical. Now we're gonna do a little bit more with this in a moment, but what I want you to try to do right now is um, to also think about labeling, not using just really 90, 180, 270. Let's think about are other measures, like maybe we use 30 degree increments or we would use 45 degree increments. Let's make the tables with our functions, uh, with our angles using the other measurements, just so that we have it as a reference. So as I said, make this as a reference for yourself. This guy definitely keep. And now let's use this and let's write degrees, two radians, and this will be 
scaling by 45 degrees. Let's say you have to scale your graph in 45 degrees, which can happen. Let's make a chart. Let's have zero degrees, 45 degrees, then we would have 90 degrees, and then 90 and 45 would be 135 degrees, and then we would have um, 180 degrees, 225, 270, 315, and then we would be at 360. So this would be my full circle broken down, not in 90 degree scale. This is a 90 degree scale or a pi over two scale. Now we're going to talk about a 45 scale and 45, if we convert 45 degrees into radians, that would be 45 times pi over 180, the same conversion from less than two, and this gives us pi over four. So zero is going to still give us zero radians, but 45 degrees is now one fourth pi. We call that pi over four, but we're counting by quarters now. So think about it. If I'm counting by quarters, four quarters makes one whole. One quarter, 90 degrees would be two quarters. Two quarters reduces to one half. 135 would be three quarters pi. Next 180 would be four quarters. Four fourths is one whole pi, just like it is here. 225, this would be five quarters. We went another quarter. 270, this would be six quarters, but six quarters reduces to three pi over two. And then we get seven quarters pi, and then we have eight quarters. Well, eight quarters is two pi. So they will work, like you, you would reduce. But if you were going to try to make your graph a little more precise and you didn't think you had enough points here, you can count by 45. So degrees to radians for a 45 degree scale, which I'm actually gonna write here for a 45 degree scale. There we go. Because now, we're going to make a 30 degree scale. So now we're gonna do the same thing and we're going to have a 30 degree scale. So I will use, I guess I'll use my purple. All right, so now I want to go for a 30 degree scale. Now let's take 30 degrees for a moment. 30 degrees, and if I turn this into radians, would be pi over 180, I would times it by pi over 180, and this actually reduces to sixths. This is pi over six. When I'm counting around the unit circle, counting in 30 degree increments, I'm counting by the fraction one sixth. When I'm counting around the unit circle with 90 degree increments, I am counting by one halves pi. One half, two halves, three halves, four halves. When I count by a 45 degree scale, I am counting by quarters. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters, seven quarters, eight quarters. Now, I'm going to count by six. So on a Counting in 30 degree increments, I would have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Then keep going with 30, I'd have 120 degrees, I'd have 150 degrees, then I get to 180. So here's my quadrantals. And then I would have 210 degrees, 240 degrees, 270, 
another quadrantal, 330, 360, um, did I forget one? 300, <laughs> just went right over 300. 300, 330, and then our 360. So look, we have a lot more. So it depends upon just how perfectly precise you want to be. You need to just get the job done. You, you can use counting by 90 degrees or one halves. You want it a little bit more, you can count by 45s, which is a one quarter pie scale. And if you want to count with a lot of detail, 30 degrees is a one sixth. So think about it, zero degrees is zero radians. 30 degrees we just found is 1 sixth pi. This would be 2 sixths pi. But 2 sixths pi, I'll just write that, this becomes 1 third pi, pi over 3. This would be 3 sixths pi. But that reduces to again pi over 2. So look at 90 degrees, no matter what scale you're using, is always going to be pi over 2. And that's going to happen with the 180, the 270, and the 360. So let's continue to count by sixths. This would be 4 over 6, but that would uh, reduce to 2 pi over 3. This would now be 5 pi over 6, can't reduce it. This would be 6 pi over 6, which would be pi. This would be 7 pi over 6, no reducing. This would be 8 pi over 6. But 8 pi over 6 would reduce to 4 pi over 3. 270 would be 9 pi over 6. This would reduce to 3 pi over 2. So notice another quadrantal. They are exactly the same and they don't change. This would become 10 pi over 6, which would reduce to 5 pi over 3. This would be 11 pi over 6, no reducing. 360, 12 pi over 6, but 12 over 6 is 2 pi. So ladies and gentlemen, please, please keep these notes someplace handy for yourself. These are going to be the scale that we are going to use on the x-axis. And in a moment, after you let yourself have time to let this sink in, then you can start on the work packet. I'm going to put up a video for that as well. So good luck. And again, always email me with any questions or concerns.